Let's take a look at the Beechcraft Bonanza. In this video, I'm going to cover some of the peculiarities about this aircraft, one of which is obvious, of course. Take a look at that tail. What a distinctive feature. But is it safe? Well, stick around because I'm going to be covering safety, but that's not the only interesting fact about the Beechcraft Bonanzas. In this video, I'm going to give you seven interesting facts about the Beechcraft Bonanza. I'll also cover performance and specs, and at the end, I'll tell you about some world records set with Beechcraft Bonanzas. And I'll also tell you what it's going to cost to buy one. So let's start by going back to its roots. The Beechcraft Bonanza is an American general aviation aircraft introduced in 1947 by Beach Aircraft Corporation of Wichita, Kansas. The first model, the Model 35, had that distinctive V-shaped tail. So here come the interesting facts, and if you know more, please add them in the comments. Fact 1. This six-seater aircraft is still being produced and has been in continuous production longer than any other aircraft in history. Fact 2. Following on from that, it's one of the most produced aircraft in the world, with over 17,000 of them produced and out there in the world. Fact 3, it was one of the first post-World War II all-metal light aircraft, which was a step up from the other fabric-skinned general aviation aircraft of the time. At the end of World War II, the first of two all-metal light aircraft were the Model 35 Bonanza and the Cessna 195. The Cessna had a high wing, fixed undercarriage in the tail dragger configuration, and it had a huge seven cylinder radial engine. In contrast, the Bonanza, with its low wing, retractable tricycle undercarriage, and opposed six cylinder engine and streamlined shape, made it look more like the sexy World War II fighter planes of the time. And that distinctive V shaped tail even made it look ahead of its time. So it was even relatively fast, so there's no surprise why it was so popular. Fact 4, the Bonanza 35 made use of rudivators, which gives it that distinctive V-shaped tail. A rudivator is a rudder and an elevator all in one. Fact 5, Bonanzas have interconnected yoke and rudder pedals, and that goes for all variants of the Bonanzas, not just the V-tail. So all Bonanzas share this unusual feature. The yoke and rudder pedals are interconnected by a system of springs or bungees if you like, which assist in keeping the aircraft coordinated in flight during turns. So the pilot can make a coordinated turn using just the yoke during the cruise. Don't get too lazy though, because rudder pressure is still needed at max revs to overcome the engine torque and P factor, such as at times like at takeoff. And fact six, the aircraft Bonanza gained a reputation for killing wealthy amateur pilots and gained the name Forked Tail Doctor Killer. And this was due to many crashes and fatalities of overconfident wealthy amateur pilots and some in-flight breakups. In fact, the name Dr. Killer has sometimes been used to describe the conventional tailed version. So, is it safe? Because it doesn't sound it with a reputation like that, and the distinctive V-shaped tail is something different. There are three main variants of the Bonanza family. The Model 35 Bonanza, which is the one with the V-shaped tail, that was produced between 1947 to 1982. The Model 33 or Debonair Bonanza, which had a conventional tail produced from 1960s to 1995, and the one that's still produced today, the Model 36, also with a conventional tail produced from 1968 to present. So those of you that are astute will notice that they actually stopped producing the V-shaped tail variant in 1982. So why was this? Well, let's have a look. In the late 1980s, there were repeated V-tail structural failures, so the United States Department of Transportation and FAA conducted extensive wind tunnel and flight tests, and they found that the V-tail did not meet type certification standards under certain conditions, and ordered the V-tail to be strengthened, which had a positive effect on safety. Beach, in response, has long contended that most V-tail failures involved operations well beyond the aircraft's intended flight envelope. Most V-tail failures occurred in poor weather conditions, such as when flying into thunderstorms, or conditions that brought on the onset of airframe icing. A study taken on common single-engine retractable gear aircraft in the United States between 1982 and 1989, and this demonstrated that the Bonanza actually had a slightly lower accident rate than other types in the study. 
Pilot error was cited for 73% of the cases in the V-shaped tail and 83% of cases for the conventional tail. And aircraft related causes accounted for 15% for the V-tail and 11% for the conventional tail. So the conventional tail was a little bit safer by those metrics. However, there was one contributing factor in those accidents in the 80s, and that was because of an unusually high instance of gear up landing and inadverted gear retraction on the ground due to a non-standard gear retraction switch on early models. This poor ergonomics helped confuse the gear switch with the flap switch, which is not what you want. However, as with most things, there is a silver lining to this. The Bonanza 35's reputation as a V-shaped tail doctor killer has lowered the purchase price of this sleek and unusual looking aircraft. And you can argue that if you stick to fair weather conditions and stay within the flight envelope, it's actually a relatively safe aircraft. Which brings us on to fact seven. Its safety record isn't actually that bad. And not as bad as some suspect, even for the V-tail variant. But Bonanza did stop production of the V-tail and continue to make the uh, conventional tail version, which is the Bonanza 36. So let's take a look at some specifications. Let's take a 2011 G36 model. So this has a crew of one, five passengers it can carry. It has a 300 brake horsepower. And in the cruise, you're gonna get 176 knots. You'll get 716 nautical miles range out of it. And you're looking at a service ceiling of 18,500 feet with a half decent rate of climb of 1,230 feet per minute. Cost wise, you're looking around three to 400,000 US dollars for a Bonanza 36. But for a Bonanza 35, you can get one for one to 200,000 dollars. So a bit cheaper. And that is on the used aircraft market. Looking at some notable flights then, in 1949, a Bonanza named, and let me pronounce this right, Waikiki Beach, was the first aeroplane to fly from Honolulu to the continental US, and later that same year it flew non-stop from Honolulu to Teterboro, setting a non-stop record of 36 hours. The aeroplane was later donated to the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum, where it still lives today. In July, 2014, a world record was set by Matt Guffmiller, who was 19 years old, and he became the youngest person to fly solo around the world, accomplishing that Guinness World Record in a Bonanza A36, with a flight time of 178.8 hours. Check out his channel where he goes over his solo flights. It's worth a watch, so I'll put a link to that in the description below. And that basically concludes the video. It was a short video on the Bonanza. If you like this video, please hit the like button. It really helps the channel out. And I've got more videos like this coming out. So if you like this, then feel free to subscribe. Until then though, I've been Pilot Mike and safe flying.